Hi everybody, this is Erin or Gimme Yarn 418 and I am here to show you what I've been working on the last two weeks. Um, it's really a mishmash of a lot of different things. Um, I have everything to show you except one thing which I ship shipped out to Z or Zelda NRJ number number, I don't know her last, her numbers. Um, so um, she contacted me and asked me if I could make one of my drawstring bags but bigger and possibly into a backpack. So I did do that. Um, what I did was I went out and bought um, a drawstring backpack and used that as the template for size and then kind of winged it. Um, and I'll put a picture in right here. You can see on the side I used a bit of red strapping to hold the drawstrings in and um, I thought it came out really nice and she seemed to like it a lot. So yeah, the next thing I have to show you is I finished the ugliest socks in the world. Um, that's what I've, I've named them. They're also the biggest pain in the butt socks in the world. Um, I knit this sock. Um, this is not my usual sock. This is, I have no idea what yarn it is. It is the ugliest sock in the world. Um, this is a plain vanilla sock with a sweet tomato heel, which has worked in wedges. And I really liked the way it was worked. I just, this yarn was a nightmare and it's ugly. So I finished this one except for the toe because I wanted to make sure that my links were the next, were the next, were the same. And then I knit this one, and they were the same size um, to the toe, and I put them on, and I said, wow, this one, my gauge on this one is a lot tighter. Well, it just so happens that I knit this one on a US 1, and I knit this one on a US 0. So, I attempted to soak this one and stretch it, and soak this one and shrink it. Um... I think it worked a tiny bit, but there's still a significant difference in the size, and it doesn't matter anyway because I think they are the ugliest socks in the world. I will still wear them because they're socks, and they're, they're very comfortable, um, and I will definitely knit the Sweet Tomato Heel again. Um, the Sweet Tomato Heel is a paid pattern on Ravelry. It's actually a book, um, and I will provide a link to that down below. That's my first thing. The next thing... I made was for an order, you've seen them before, two iced beverage cozies. Plain and simple. Sorry I keep jumping out of frame. Um, the next thing I made I showed you in my previous video but it wasn't felted and that was the, the hedgehog. Oh my gosh, he's so stinking cute. And then I've, it's actually been pointed out to me that I say it's so stinking cute a lot and I never realized it. So I'm not going to try and not say it, and I'm not going to try and say it more, but he's really stinking cute. So here he is. Um, I made this for Mia, our chihuahua, because all her favorite toys are hedgehogs, and we named them all Herbie. So we have um, Caveman Herbie, we have Pink Herbie, we have Blue Herbie, we have Dead Herbie, which is a de-stuffed Herbie. Um, we have New Herbie, and now we have Sumo Herbie. <laughs> so I absolutely love him, and he was so much fun to knit. This is a paid pattern by Fiber Trends. Um, it's knit out of 100% wool and fun fur. And you've heard me say before, I hate fun fur. I still hate fun fur. Um, but for some reason, there seems to be an increasing amount of it in my stash because he's so stinking cute. So this one's for Mia and Dewey, if she lets him play with it. And she seems to, at first she was a little afraid of it, but she seemed to have warmed up to him. And he is so, so stinking cute. And he's addictive because I cast on another one. This one's not felted yet. Um, this one was knit out of Galway wool and brown fun fur. My next one was, oh, this was out of Galway too, but my next one, this one's for me, uh, or maybe Kristen, I'm not sure, because I do have another one lined up, and this one is so cute! 
Um, Kristen said it reminds, I said it looks like a Fraggle, and Kristen said, oh my god, it looks like Boober from Fraggle Rock, so his name is Boober, and, um, when he is felted, his belly gets solid instead of that dent in the middle to make it look like something else, uh, that makes it look like something else, um, so he's so cute, and I love the contrast of the teal and the lime green, um, so he will be felted maybe this weekend, maybe next weekend. He should be in my next completed in my next video. Um, and I have another one lined up, and it is going to have a hot pink body and black fun fur. And I think that one's going to be for me, and I know you're all shocked that I picked pink. Okay, so that's that. And the next thing I did, our nieces came over on... When did they come over? They came over the other day, um, and I said, do you want to dye yarn? And they were like, oh, yeah, let's dye yarn, let's dye yarn. So the first thing we did was sock blanks, and I won't show you that now. I'll show you that when I have it all skeined up, probably in a photo, because I am going to give it to them. Um, but it still needs to be soaked and skeined, and right now it's in, it's in a sock blank. Um, but they had a lot of fun with those. We did those with squirt bottles, and it was a lot of fun. The next thing we did was dip dye in the microwave with Kool-Aid, and our seven-year-old niece made this one. And it's so cool, and I kind of wish that I didn't have to give it to her because I really like it. But I'm really proud of her, and they seem to have a really... A lot of fun doing it and if anyone's interested this is lime kool-aid and this is peach mango which she seems to be fascinated with peach mango kool-aid because then we had to make peach mango kool-aid and I didn't even know she liked anything like that so that's the first one the next one was by our nine-year-old niece and here it is and this is berry blue and this is watermelon cherry um, again, dip dyed in the microwave, and it came out great, and I can't wait for them to see it. I will reskein this so it will look even variegated in this, more variegated in the skein than just half and half. Um, so yeah, this is really exciting. These are both going to be for them. And then I dip dyed one, and I did it also in berry blue and watermelon cherry. I think that's what I said it was. But I did a higher concentration. Actually, my watermelon cherry, I added some pink lemonade to try and bring out the pink hues, and it didn't really attain anything. But my, I added extra berry blue, and it came out a lot more vibrant blue. I wish there was a way for me to show you what this is going to look like in this game. But um, I will show you. I will have this one when it's done. Um, so, yeah, that's that. I'm considering um, doing some dyeing for my Etsy shop if people are interested in it. Um, the only thing people have to realize is that um, for me to dye the way I dye, um, it's not repeatable. <laughs> They're all one-of-a-kind skeins and it has to be uh, animal fiber. So it has to be wool, probably wool because it's most readily accept acceptable. Accessible. So yeah, that's that. So if anybody's interested in that, let me know and I will I will look into doing stuff like that. The next thing I made was a special order. Someone contacted me on Etsy and sent me a picture of a hat they have, which I will not name. They were very upset monsters, or very upset dolls, and they asked, could I make some um, American doll style hats to match it? And I did. So cute! The original hat had five teeth, um, but I thought that five teeth would just be too big for like a, a tiny, a tiny doll. And she likes them. They're going out in the mail on Monday. And last but not least, um, someone I know from high school, well, actually growing up, um, contacted me and said, my sister is having her first baby. She doesn't know if it's a boy or a girl, and she's doing everything in ducks. Can you make some stuff for ducks? So I said, oh, my gosh, I can totally make some things for ducks. So I made a duck hat. Uh, this is my own pattern. I just uh, kind of looked at some pictures of what some other people did, and and did them up. It was really cute. And this <laughs> this is the best part. This is the best part. I'm sorry. I keep looking out the window because Kristen is not here right now. And I'm waiting for her to come back. So the next part goes with it. It's a set. And the person I made it for absolutely loves it. And they are <laughs> little webbed feet booties. And aren't they the cutest? Oh, I love them. 
Next I'm going to try and make a frog um, with some webbed feet, some frog feet, and uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a staple, a staple product. Uh, I think with a little orange diaper cover it would be so, so cute. So yeah, so that's all I have for this week. Thanks so much for watching. I did want to let everybody know that this will be my last cast off crew video. I have decided that it's time for me to move on. I have so enjoyed being part of the cast off crew um, and I look forward to watching everyone that um, is making videos. Um, I still will be making videos, um, but I have really added a lot to my crafting plate so it's not just knitting and crocheting um, and I, I have a lot of ideas for the future so I feel that it's in my best interest to um, to just go in my own direction and I just want to thank Laura and everybody on the cast off crew for welcoming me, welcoming me in. I have truly felt um, just like I belonged and it was a great, it is a great feeling and um, it's with a heavy heart that I make this decision but I do think that it is the best choice for me moving forward. So it is goodbye to the cast off crew it is hello to the next chapter and everything more that is still to come so I hope that you will continue to watch my videos and until next time have a great day bye